So, Daddy, it's actually warm outside. I don't know why I got on this long sleeve, but this is a cute little birthday look for the day. Uh, I don't think we're doing anything like extravagant today, but I just wanted to get cute. Babe looks cute. He looks handsome. And we're going to go to the mall and we're going to shop till we drop. Big Daddy. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Hey, guys. We are getting ready to go out for dinner, and we want to- On a date! And we want to bring you guys along with us. So I'm basically ready. All I got to do is just iron my clothes and get ready. So I'm just on the phone chilling. My birthday was, I don't know how many the days ago. On the 8th. Um, and we saved my birthday and Valentine's Day to just do together so that we can go out to dinner. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be my birthday slash Valentine's Day dinner. I'm excited. We went to the mall. I got an outfit because I literally had nothing, and I found something. So yeah. And I put out. I put out the restaurant. So I think it's gonna be lovely. I know she's gonna enjoy it. Um, you guys gonna give me my props too and stop playing on my nugget. I don't think nobody's playing with you. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll catch you guys up later, all right? And reservation is at 10, so we're going to try to leave at 9. You think you'll be able to do it? Yes. What time is it now? It is 7.33. I'll be done by 9, y'all. Trust me, I'm going to record my outfit. I'm going to be done. I'm not getting ready in the car. Mark my words. We'll see. This is what... This is what my face is looking like, my base. Let me know if y'all want a makeup tutorial, okay? Yeah, everybody, she's still doing her makeup. You guys guessed correctly. I almost fell asleep, but we're checking in, babe. Show them a quick. I ain't gonna lie, the, the face is beat, y'all. I can't even lie. I can't even lie. She's doing a good job. She look beautiful, don't she, y'all? Oh, tell you. my wife she look beautiful in the comments. Everybody who looking, tell her right now. Thank you. Okay then. Peace. I'm almost done though, guys. Like, I just gotta put on some blush, and then I do my lips, and then I'll be finished. We'll see. Please ignore um, my hair, but I got an outfit from Forever Twenty One. I went to Zara, could not find anything. So this is the fit for tonight. Y'all know we just moved to Houston, so I don't have no clothes for the cold weather. It's 40 degrees here. So I had to throw something together really quick today. It's here, it's here. These are the bottoms. Super, super duper cute. This is the top. I don't worry. We're wearing our jacket. So this is the top. And then this is the jacket. I'm gonna pair it with some cute heels, a really cute bag. I have to hurry up and go because y'all heard him. It's 810. Y'all, I was ready before him. That's all I gotta say. It's 902. I was ready for eight. 30. So that's not 845. 8.45. He just finished getting dressed, guys. Anyways. I just put on my shirt. My scent is YSL and Ebony Wood. Together, these are the perfect combo. Y'all need to go shop Zara's perfume because their perfumes are hit. Show them the fit. This is the jacket that I got. Jacket. <laughs> yeah. I'm wearing this bag. Yeah. And then the heels that I'm wearing. I don't have them on yet, but these are the heels. Y'all see the little gold accent? Y'all know I love me some gold jewelry. Yeah. And this is my fit. Show them your fit, babe. Wait, show them how you walk down the runway right there. Yeah. Yeah, like come back. Come back. Yeah. Yeah. They cheering for you, babe. They cheering for you, babe. They cheering for you, babe. Period. Yes, ma'am. Show them your outfit. 
So this is a polo tee, black um, trousers, and he's gonna wear his off-white sneakers. Um, I look like a ballet driver, you guys. What color are you wearing? I'm excited. So here goes base combo. A little dab of both. Yeah. Yeah, actually smells really, Smell really good. Money. Yeah, yeah. My jib, boom, boom. Okay, bye. Yeah, bye, guys. So see y'all so so when we get in the car. Hey, she, so, so we are in the car, headed to the restaurant. I'm super, super duper excited to eat, take pictures, and have a good time. Yes, ma'ams and yes, sirs. We'll eat. We'll make sure we eat enough for y'all, too. Yeah, we will. It's important to date. Even when you marry, still date. And if you single, date Jesus. Hey. John Anderson, yeah. Alright y'all, so we arrived. So, we are at the Juliet. That's actually the one you name. <laughs> <laughs> guys dinner was amazing 10 out of 10 we just left the mcdonald's drive through because y'all know they gotta get his oreo mcflurries and yeah we love a good restaurant a good black owned restaurant i had a great time babe you did good on this spot i'm not gonna lie you did thank you thank you a1 a1 Definitely. The only thing is, like, I was just telling Lee, I don't like when famous people be at the restaurants because they just be doing the most. Like, they was in there making so much noise. But we had a great time. Not necessarily them, though. They're entourage. Yeah, their entourage. His entourage is making a lot of noise. But we had an amazing time. We're about to go home. Shower up, watch a movie, get in that bed, and call it a night okay guys so we're at home now i think it's like almost 12 o'clock we are so tired but we're about to shower up i'm gonna take off this makeup get ready to go to bed I'm gonna watch an episode or two of our favorite show and yeah thank you guys for coming with us to our date night let us know if you guys want us to do more of these our getting ready process um <clears throat> And I think we're gonna be starting like this new series where we do alphabet dating. So every letter of the alphabet will pick a date with that letter. So yeah, got anything to say, babe? Good night. Y'all know when Lee gets tired, he don't speak. So good night, we love you guys. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, do all the things and stay tuned for our next video. Y'all, why am I whispering? Babe. So right now, it is a surprise. I'm going on a surprise date. Don't know where I'm going. Mr. Henley has planned this date. He just told me to get ready and told me what to put on. So right now, I have on a workout outfit with some sneakers <laughs> and a crossbody bag. So is there anything you'd like to tell the camera? Cause I have no idea where we're going. He told me I could have done, did a light beat and I asked him, should I put on lashes or uh, mascara? And he said either or. So obviously I'm gonna opt out for lashes. So. I told you, you don't have to wear makeup. And if you do, do a light beat. That's what I told him. Yes. What's going on, sir? That's what I told him. Yes, he told me I don't have to wear makeup, but if I do, just do a light beat. And I really think this is a light beat. I don't even have on no contour, no nothing. But I really think she gonna enjoy this date because it's, it's real intimate. Uh, we're gonna, I think we're gonna learn something new about each other. I thought that was bird poop on my car. Uh, but yeah, I look forward to seeing her reaction because she- <laughs> She don't know. I don't know, I know nothing. I don't like, like I love surprises, but I hate when I don't be knowing. Because Lee has a tendency, when he does surprises, he'll tell me to, oh, put this on, put this on. And what he's telling me to put on, don't be matching with the vibe. But I trust him because I see what he got on. Because if I if I tell her too much, he has she on guess right. forces, shorts, white tee, and a hat. So it's comfortable. I told her something comfortable. He did tell me something. Oh, well, actually, guys, let me tell y'all what he told me. Okay. He told me that I can put on um, either jeans or sweats. Now, why would he tell me jeans or sweats? That's just giving like 
I don't know. It could go both ways. So we'll see. We're on the way. He woke up early this morning talking about some baby. You can start getting ready. Like, sir, it's eight o'clock. Where are we going? <laughs> Tell me what time it is now. <laughs> it's eleven oh four, you guys. Yeah. Okay. Well, I had to get ready. So yeah, that's where we're going right now. I don't know what's going on with this camera, but we'll record when we get there. It's it's two parts to this date, by the way. Yeah. Oh, and he also told me to pick a number one through three. So obviously I'm gonna pick two because that's the middle number. That's the number I wanted you to pick too. This is the place I wanted to go. To. I wanted to try first. This is gonna be a multiple date series. Okay. <laughs> See Lee. High five, babe. Lee is back in his date bag. <laughs> All right, let's go, bro. <laughs> He's trying to hide the. <laughs> Nobody's on the phone with you. <laughs> this is cute. Do you know what it is? No, what is this? Oh, coffee shop? Yes, yeah, the first part is a coffee shop. Okay. This is one of the places I want to try. Oh, the one of the places you was telling me about. Uh-huh. Okay. I did ask him if um, I should have ate breakfast this morning, and he said no. So I'm excited. If you know me, you know. I love me a good coffee shop. I love me a good chai latte. I love me a good matcha. I just love coffee. So this is fun. It's cute and you can sit outside. So cute. It's really intimate. So let's see what it looks like inside. Hi. Is this for here to go? <laughs> Say it again. What do you think the second part is? Of the day is? Yeah. I don't know. I have no clue. I didn't think we were going to come here, but when you told me to bring my tote bag, I'm like, hmm, maybe we could have went to a park, but I don't know. So y'all comment below what y'all think part two of the day is. I, we got some good stuff, y'all. So. And it goes, it kind of goes hand in hand with this. So if you're a thinker, think. Boy, bye. <laughs> Guys, so I got a strawberry, what is this color? I got a strawberry rose chai latte. Cause I'm a hot type of girl in the mornings because my stomach just be tearing up. Lee got a Ferrero Rocher CB latte, whatever that is, but I'm gonna be trying that. Yeah. I got the breakfast hammock, it has ham, cheese, eggs, we got the fries with ranch, aioli, and ketchup, and we got a patty with ham, bacon, and I don't know what else, but it looks really, really good. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. 30 out of 30. And babe approves, of course. Everything with that PT, uh, Adamant, y'all? BT, babe. BT? <laughs> I tell y'all, boy. <laughs> Y'all know he don't play by his food. And it's not too expensive too. Good, everything good price, ain't it? Yeah. <sighs> okay, guys. So, this place was a 10 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. The food was great. <sighs> so, my tea was really good. I really enjoyed it. Baby's food was good. His coffee was good. You know, I had to have some. So, yeah. She, um... Women, <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So you you have a, a your spouse, right? Why do you guys drink or eat their meal before they can lay their lips on what they ordered? Why? Be I don't. I, uh, baby, wait. Um, I got back to the table from grabbing our food like a gentleman, you know, being a good, good, good gentleman. Um, and I just take a look at my straw and I see lipstick all around it. Mind you, I haven't placed my own lips on my own drink. Yeah, so my first sip was, uh, I taste, what, what is that, cherry blossom? What is it? It's elf. I, I tasted elf instead of, what did I order? A flippy chakiyaru? <laughs> yeah. He don't even know what he ordered because I ordered for him. Let me just say, I had to taste it for you to make sure it was safe for you to drink. 
Okay. And made sure that you would have liked it. Okay. So what happened if it would have had cinnamon in it? Then you would have had to take me to the hospital. Okay. If y'all don't know, I'm allergic to cinnamon. So anyways, we were just in there really just talking about the Lord because God is just so good. We were reflecting back to like not even a year ago probably like nine months back we just you know took it back to nine months and we was just like god is really not a god who operates on time especially not our time like you know nine months to him nine months to us is like nine days or nine hours to him like time literally flies and i was just telling lee like we're speaking about a certain situation and it was just like babe like this don't feel like this happened nine months ago mm -hmm. this feel like this happened maybe like two weeks ago like let's look at our lifespan in the last nine months engagement well first of all deliverance coming to christ engagement married like moved out to a whole different state like living on our own all in that like time span and it just seems like everything was just like all that's happening with no job with no nothing but christ and <clears throat> so we were just talking about like discernment really like that's what it is based off of. and and we just feeling led to include this inside of the the little mini vlog um but discernment is so key you guys because discernment can shake you because god god can give you a vision right and you may interpret or discern it your own way carnally and let's say for timing it like God is telling you, he showed you a vision of you getting married, right? And you thinking since he showed you that vision on, what today's date? February, uh, March 4th, 4th, that you're going to get married in March or you're going to get married this year. But that vision he, he showed you could be two years down the line, uh, three years down the line, whenever. And, you know, when it don't happen in that time that you initially discerned it, it can it can hurt you it could break your heart right mm -hmm. because you interpret it your own way and now you mad at god right so i just want you guys to know to like pray for your discernment to heighten like like pray for discernment because it is so key like a lot of people they fall out with god because of they discerning their own way and they thinking god is telling them uh one thing at this one time but he's saying something completely completely different, different right so that discernment is really really key especially when it comes to like dreams and visions like i know like the both of us we are vivid dreamers and we see very vivid visions and it can almost feel like you can almost get a sense like okay it's coming it's coming it's coming and god's just like hold on like, like chill yeah. it ain't time yet i'm just i love you so much i'm just showing you a little glimpse but this is not even the whole thing that i have planned and that's why i was just telling lee like you know with these next couple of weeks not even just the next couple of weeks for the rest of our lives but really like we need to really hone in these next couple of weeks and cling on to jesus for dear life because i don't want no type of emotions to get in the way of what god is about to do yeah. like you know when you can just feel something stirring up in your spirit like especially in your stomach i just feel like something something's about to happen really soon and our discernment needs to be up here because when the time comes we need to be able to not be acting off of emotions if something comes to like you know if if we think we're going straight and god's like all right we need to make a detour make a left we got to be able to roll with the punches we got to be able to you know go trust. trust god and just go with whatever he has planned because sometimes we have such straight tunnel vision and it's like it's not always a straight path. Like sometimes God be like, all right, we're going to make this left. Let me see if this going to shake your faith. All right, you still rocking with me? All right, we can get back on the path, but we about to make it right. Like, okay, you still with me? Like you still trying to seek my voice? You're still seeking my face because you're holding on to my promise? Like, yes, Lord, I'm holding on to that promise until I see the promised land, period. Yeah. Discernment is also so important because you don't want to do something prematurely, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to... Like, for example, I gave an example with marriage. You don't want to go ahead and hurry up and force someone to marry you or hurry up and try to get in marriage. And, you know, that person is not ready. Or neither are you, right? You're, he's still building up you and your kingdom spouse, right? He's, chill, he's still preparing y'all uh, for marriage, right? But I want you guys, well, we just want you guys to know, pray for your discernment. Ask the Lord to build your discernment, to grow your discernment. Grow sensitive to his voice. Continue to... Um, just allow the Lord to, to lead you. So I always remember God is in control, man. And even when you do discern incorrectly, you know, you repent and his grace is so sufficient, he'll get you right back on track. 
Okay, guys, yeah, so we just wanted to turn on the camera and say that. And let's go to our next date. You excited? Yes, ma'am. All right, y'all. So we had the second place um, for the date. So we are at Barnes & Noble. You guessed it, Barnes & Noble. All right, so what we're doing, right? And I'm whispering because we're at the library, Barnes & Noble. Okay, so what we're doing, we're gonna pick three books, right? So we're gonna pick a, a book about faith, any book we want. I'm gonna pick three, we're gonna pick three. One book is gonna be about faith, the other is gonna be about marriage, and the third one is random, right? So we're gonna get, I'll say 15 minutes for each book. 15 minutes for each read, book. Read, book? read the book for 15 minutes. Oh. And then we'll switch and then we'll share. Mm -hmm. What we got from it, the revelation and everything, we're gonna go to the second book and then to the third book. We probably, should we separate? Like go, you go, or pick them together? I mean, it don't matter because we're not gonna pick the same book. Correct. All right, yeah, cool. Peace. So we in the religion side, so we're going to find us a faith uh, based book first. And I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to choose for me. <laughs> okay, babe, showing you book she chose. I got Embrace Your Almost by Jordan Lee Dooley. Oh. <laughs> Cute girly. And then I chose God Never Gives Up On You by Matt. Lucado, Lucido, Lucado, whatever you name. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Alright, so we about to read and then we'll come back. Ready, go. Like I said, my book is God Never Gives Up On You. So with the chapters I read, um, something that stood out to me was how it emphasized have, how we have not only breakthroughs, but breakdowns as well. And so those breakdowns are obviously those, the shortcomings, right? So when we fall short of the glory of the Father and our sins, our transgressions, right? So, um, you know, misbehaving, falling short of the glory of God. Uh, but at the end of the day, he can still use us. And like the title of the book says, he never gives up on you, right? And it just speaks about his grace as well, which is sufficient, right? And how grace finds you, I wrote this down, that grace finds you in your wilderness and in your shortcomings. And I, I think I like this book. Uh, I, from reading the chapter I read, I, I think it would be a pretty good book. And also a point. Um, that I want to highlight how I said when it comes to miracle God has the last laugh right so in terms of when it's a situation that looks like it's not working out for your favor it's all it always is and God always get the last laugh out of every situation everything that looks like it's bad he turned it away to work in your good for his glory right so that's what I was getting from this book and it's bay time I like what you said the last part about God always gets the last laugh because we know that miracle and favor goes hand in hand and a lot of the times like the favor that we have over our lives don't make sense. Mm -hmm. God's favor don't make sense. So my book, um, it wasn't necessarily, I think they might have put this in the wrong section but I feel like God probably pointed, pointed it out to me for a reason because um, it's just basically a, a young lady talking about her life like just about disappointments and um, how sometimes the dreams that we have, like, they don't always come to fruition, right? So, um, she just speaks about, like, how she was working on this project, um, that she, she's a very successful woman already, so she started to work on this project that was outside of her jurisdiction and outside of her comfort zone. And so when she said that in the book, it just made me think about, like, a lot of times we have plans and we have all these dreams that we don't incorporate God in, and we move outside of what He's graced us for. So in this case, she moved outside of God's grace, expecting to get the same favor that she got over her life, because she was in God's will, but she moved outside of God's will, and 
and now she doesn't have the grace you know to fulfill this project and for this project to be so successful so she was saying how like in the midst of like you know her coming to the end of this project she was just basically saying like you know she didn't even break even with the project like with even the money that she put into it and all of her time and hard work what she's getting out of it wasn't even even to what she put in so it was kind of like a waste of time and money. But she was saying during her project how she picked up this hobby of gardening and she said she lives in the Midwest. So she started her gardening um, towards like the end of the summer. And as you know, like gardening, it's not just planting seeds and watering it, no. When you're gardening, you have to like make sure you're gardening during the right season and you, you know, just all of the things to just tend to your garden. So she was saying how like, um, in the midst of that disappointment like with her work she are um, also came up on a gardening disappointment something that she was using to help her cope with this disappointment over here so she was saying like um i guess towards like the end when it was time for her to pick her crop she said like she only had four kale leaves she said not four plants like literally four leaves and she looked at it like oh my gosh like you know she failed but she was like in that moment it was like she could have either looked at it as a failure or as a learning experience because she said on one hand she knew nothing about gardening but she was able to grow four leaves and this was her first time ever doing it in the wrong season you know not following the right directions but she said on the other hand she could have looked at it as a failure because it's like wow like four leaves like really like i can't even make a salad so um yeah that's just what my book was about and i was just trying to relate like um all of the situations to god and just like even with the gardening thing like you know sometimes god will bring us to some situations and we'll be thinking like you know why are we going through this like why why me why me why me and i feel like um with reading this book and even just like relating it back to my life situations like we have to stop asking why me and just start asking like god what are you trying to get me to learn out of this situation so our next part is we're going to find a book about marriage and we're going to do the same thing Okay, let's go to the merit section. All right, y'all, so I'm stuck between two. This one called The Relationship Grid, and this one is called The Good Fight. Babe is thinking about, read it, eight dates? Yes, eight dates. So, decision, decision, decisions. So right now, we are on the phone with Pastor Jason and Pastor Colette because for the past couple of months I've been getting very, very prophetic dreams and um, Lee and I have been getting dreams that kind of correlate with each other within the same night. So we're just getting some dream interpretation, some godly wisdom, godly counsel, um, what the Lord is trying to reveal to the both of us. Mm -hmm. So yeah so we had to pause our little day and we had to do some kingdom work because i know god is really trying to tell me something in this season and listen prophetic dreams like if you do not discern and if you don't get godly counsel godly wisdom and if you don't have the holy spirit interpreted okay, for you right you now. will take the dream to like a whole different level because with my dreams okay so i was kind of getting a little scared it's to the point in the where we were down like and scored all right y'all so we got our second book my book is relationship grit it is by john gordon and Catherine gordon I got two books, but only because this is an actual book and this one just has like fun facts. This one is by Maria Del Russo and this one is by um, a bunch of people. So I'm gonna read one chapter of this and I'm gonna read a couple pages of this and we're gonna come back and talk to y'all about it. Peace. Um, this book was speaking about the different um, parts of marriage it was this particular story because in this book there are different stories of different couples so the couple that stood out to me the most was the first couple and basically um, I was talking about how you know they met in college and how they make it a thing like every week like the last day of every week they make sure that they come together and they have a date night and you know they don't bring up work they don't bring up their careers or anything like they strictly speak about their relationship because a lot of the times like you know when you're in a marriage it's two different people like two of your 
own personalities and worlds just colliding into one and sometimes it can just be really like you don't want marriage to feel like a business almost so they were saying like you know it just felt very businessy for them so they just made sure like on their date nights they would just talk about you know themselves talk about any conflicts that they may have had throughout the week and like how they can move on past it and you know just incorporate god in their decisions it brought me to remind myself like not all dates we have to spend money on some dates could just be us taking a walk or in the library just sitting down reading like it's just very important to date your partner and then this book is called simple acts of love so um it's just like a bunch of different things to tell you like how you can love you know your partner in small ways so one that stood out to me was um truly listen when they talk to you put your phone down turn your eyes away from your computer mute the television what may seem like idle chit chat to you may be important to your partner so make sure your attention is completely on them you may be surprised by what you may learn so I know um, before we got married. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm already smelling. I know exactly what you're saying. Before we got married, it was like a thing. Like when we would go out, I used to always just be a picture person. Like I love taking pictures. I love taking videos. Like I just love that type of stuff. So obviously pre-deliverance, that's what I used to love to do. Like just be on my phone all the time especially when we were on dates so i wasn't really like present in our dating time and he used to get like really like not really mad but i can tell that it was something that really bothered him and i didn't understand why it bothered him that i was on my phone and i used to be like oh my gosh i can't be on my phone i can't do nothing like i was one of those but praise the lord he delivered me i'm delivered but um yeah so i i know that that's something that's really really important like just being present especially in the moment like the phone can wait so with that, I mean, it's beautiful in itself how Ray, how Ray, she, she kind of, she honored, like, she, she learned how to honor, like, the way I feel uh, when it comes to, you know, when we speak and, like, let's just be us speaking and no other distractions. But also, I learned how to honor her in a way because I know that she loves pictures and things like that. Okay, she can't be the only one that's compromised as far as making taking something away that she loves to make me feel better. I can do the same thing. So I think it's beautiful how we both, it's like we, we met in the middle, cause it's times like, okay, babe, now I'm, but you sure you wanna take a picture? Or, you know what I'm saying? And, and the same thing, vice versa, like with the with the phone. So we both met each other halfway. Like she still do what she want with taking pictures and videos and I still get her full attention. So we learn how to value each other's uh, wants and, and, and needs right. in, in the midst of that. So another one that, another one says, if your partner has a good relationship with their parents, strive to maintain a relationship with them too. You don't necessarily have to pick up the phone and chat with them for hours, but something as simple as sending a text message to check in on them or wish them happy birthday will go a long way in showing your partner that their family means a lot to you too. So me and my mom, besties, like that's my girl. I love her so much. And I think that you guys, mm -hmm. they have such a funny relationship because it's like, I think they're more besties than me. My mom are besties. Like, mm -hmm. they be on the phone without me all the time. They be texting each other. Like, they'll send each other scriptures and stuff and just pray for each other. And I think that that's the sweetest thing. Him and his mom are extremely close too. And I feel like we have our own personal relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, when I flew home the other day, like, I had to go and check on my girl because she's my girl too. And we be texting each other. We be sending each other stuff on Instagram. So, just the fact that we, we both have really, really good relationships with our moms and like vice versa like we have good relationship with each other's moms i think that that is so important as well because like imagine like you have a good relationship with your parents and like your partner is an outsider no or so. he's they're jealous of that relationship or jealous of that relationship like it's not like that here like we all gel together and i think it's because like we just honor like you can see what your partner honors like i clearly see that you honor and you value that relationship with your mom so i make it a point like to make sure me and her are good and vice versa and i mean if i just gotta throw a fun fact i think she do get a little jealous with me and mama b relationship but hey that's just me though yeah because like sometimes it just be like they be ganging up on me <laughs> Like, who's, I be like, mom, like, whose side are you on, for real? Yeah. Okay. So my book is Relationship Grit. This book, I low-key want to, like, like, buy it, like, today. Like, not rent, buy it. And this book is beautiful, so it got grit, which is an acronym. The G stand for God, the R stand for resolve, the I stand for invest, and the T stand for together, right? And something, uh, something, a gem that, 
I got from reading this book is, if you want to change the fruit, you must change the roots. So if you want to change the- He's spitting. If you want to change the, you want good fruits because you're producing bad fruit, you got to change the root of the fruit, right? And grit the God, uh, God. It says how it speaks about how persistence pays off. That's one of the key points in that chapter. And I was just thinking about um, how you need to be resilient in relationships. And you think about even when you first meet uh, a partner, like how, uh, you know, one may be more interested in the other when it first starts. And obviously the one that's more interested is more resilient. Like, um, say I'm hitting up Ray and she Not shoot me her. off yeah, five times in a row. We plan to go on dates, but she run me off, right? You're still like pers pursuing me even though like I'm not giving you much to pursue. Exactly. You're being resilient. And how a triple triple braided cord and how God is the center of the relationship is hard for the enemy. I wrote this down. That if God is the center of the relationship, it's hard for the enemy to come between it. Right? So we always know that God is undefeated versus the devil versus the enemy, right? So when we think about it, and when the enemy comes to try the kind of between our marriage, right, he cannot prevail because the relationship is built on Christ Jesus. The relationship is, is built on a firm foundation, which is undefeated versus the enemy. Right? The next part is resolve, which is the R in grit. So obviously resolving conflict, resolving problems, whatever. And I, one thing that I thought about while reading this is, how it takes is, is one person, it takes two to resolve the issue. And saying so, like, say I make, say someone make a mistake in their marriage, right? One partner make a mistake. Obviously, that the person that made a mistake, he made a mistake, or he or she made a mistake, they must uh, fix those ways or change their way, whatever it is. If they go out too much, if they party too much, whatever it is, they must change those ways. But also, in doing so, when they're working on changing those ways, the other partner must have some grace. With the, with the partner as they're working on, you know, being better for the marriage. And that's why I say how it takes two to resolve that matter. And also acknowledge. I think acknowledging that your partner is trying to do a better job, like that's important as well. Yeah, and then the, the I for invest. And basically to have, to have a great relationship, you can't act like you are two on two separate teams. You must invest time and energy to become one team who supports and encourage each other. Right? <laughs> the two become became one, literally. So, you know, everything that she, you know, got goals and dreams, I gotta push her and push it like it's my my own. Right. And the last one is T, which is together. So when you have relationship grit, you don't give up when things are hard, right? You work together and invest in your relationship and through the process, you become stronger together, right? And when you just think about grit, you think about being resilient. You know, with grit, you gotta have endurance, right? You gotta endure the hard times, whether it be uh, together in the marriage relationships or in your relationships, uh, any relationship, right? Anything in life, you gotta have grit. I feel like this is, it's a very short read, but it's a read that you can read over over and over and over again and you can share this with other people as well mm -hmm. so yeah we're gonna be starting a little cute little library in our home and i feel like this would be the perfect addition so now it's time for the third and final book which is a random book i don't know what i don't know what type of book i choose i don't know something probably something different are you Nothing a fiction sports. or non-fiction person i don't know you don't know it's yet? been such a while since i like read i'm a non-fiction type person but i do love fiction okay Fun fact about me, if you guys don't know, I'm an avid reader, like, especially when I was in school, middle school, high school, I used to win awards for reading books. Like, in middle school, I read the most books out of the whole school. So, I love reading, and I love books. I love all types of books. I love fiction, non-fiction, I love romance books, I love everything, so. I think this is gonna be uh, something that we might do at least once or twice uh, a, a month, at least, and give these videos out, because, I mean, it's beautiful how we can read these books, even if it's not about Christ or it is. We can turn around to Jesus. Exactly, and I think this would be good for you guys as well. You guys receive revelation and read books. Who don't want to get smarter? <laughs> but next third book. All right, we had to switch locations because someone took our spot. So, for our third and final book, uh, is this was to choose a random book. So. Ben and I both chose from the business uh, aisle. And my book is called The Elephant and the Mouse. And I don't know what drew me to this, but I feel like it's gonna be a good little nice little read and babe. Um, mine is called Nothing Is Missing by Nicole Walters. 
beautiful black queen right here. I'm excited to see what she has to say. <laughs> we'll be back. So guys, I'm only a couple pages into my book and let me just tell y'all. Um, but this is something that she said in the book. She said, everything is right, everything is wrong, but nothing is missing. Let that sink in. Everything is right, everything is wrong, but nothing is missing. Right season, right? Everything is wrong, but you could be discerning the season wrongly, right? So this could be a sowing season and you're thinking you're supposed to be reaping a harvest. You get what I mean? Like right season, wrong discernment, and nothing is missing. So the nothing is missing part, God could have given you all the correct tools to be, you know, great in this season, to prosper in this season, but you're not using the tools that God's given you. So that's how I, I, that's how I interpreted everything is right, everything is wrong, and nothing is missing. Um, and another thing that she said in this book was just basically she said, um, okay, we can get really hung up on how you could have done everything better. So I followed the steps, I did the plans, I bought the courses, I got the mentors, I went to therapy, I showed up in every way, I did every single thing I was supposed to do and everything was still wrong. So that just brought me to say like you could probably feel like you're doing everything right like you know you took the marketing course you took the um content creator course or you took this class or you did this degree or you did this mentorship or whatever program that you probably spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars for and it's still not working out for you that's because god did not grace you for that season and i just feel like this book is just so timely because early in the vlog we were speaking about seasons and just like how god will grace you for certain things and how like you can probably come up with this brilliant idea in your mind and you can go and you can go 100 percent behind that idea you can purchase everything you need to purchase all the tools all the courses everything and just put 100 percent of yourself into that business or into that act and it can still fall through that's because god didn't grace you for that like, that's why it's so important i stress it again to just make sure that we're involving and incorporating god in all of our decisions every single idea take it back to god because yes god gives you ideas and god gives you visions but the enemy can too so we have to make sure that we're doing the god thing and not something that just sounds good so that's what i got for my book so my book obviously is called the elephant and the mouse so just a quick i'm curious to know what this is about mind this is biz it was in a business session so um the first chapter just talked about the hard truths on diversity, diversity, equity, and, and inclusion. And, you know, it's just speak about, you know, some of the facts about it, like how women are not really that, uh, have those big roles in the workplace and everything like that. And um, then chapter two, we'll just go speak about the elephant and the mouse and um, basically how, you know, it says like, the mouse knows who the elephant it is. The mouse knows who the elephant is, but the elephant doesn't know who the mouse is, right? So basically, you know, when you think about a company or organization, everyone knows who the CEO is, right? But does the CEO know who the janitor is, who, is, who's the, everyone in lower position, right? Like, is he taking that time? And it just made me uh, just trying to relate it back to, you know, God or whatever, like, dude, do you think too highly of yourself because you are the CEO? Do you forget that you once were the janitor, for example? So, you know, guy has called me. Um, I grew up in the hood, but I'm no longer in the hood. Do I forget where I come from? Do I feel like I'm too good to go back and minister or share the gospel with those, you know, people that still operate in that, those circumstances, right? So, right, so the mouse knows who the elephant is now, but did I forget who, who they are? You know, just because I'm the elephant, I've grown to be the elephant now. Does that mean I forget who the mouse was? Because I was just there with them, right? And it just made me think about that. Like, you know, everyone deserves salvation. Everyone deserves to hear, you know, the, the truth about, you know, Christ and everything. And, no, you know, I, I like to have a little book, and I like how you related it back to God. I think that was really good. I feel like this is one of the books, though, that you need to read the whole book. Because it started off slow, but, um, yeah. Ruby Park. Logging out. Okay, guys, so we just left Barnes and Noble. Well, we're outside of Barnes and Nobles. We're about to head home. I truly enjoyed date day. I'm so happy that we did this. Um, coffee shop was 10 out of 10. I'm actually hungry again, so 
gonna go home and eat and I really enjoyed reading books I think it just brought me back to when I really used to just read like every day all day mm -hmm. and yeah yeah and today was beautiful I think I did good you guys with the two dates um two and one we had fun uh, it was beautiful to go on a date with your wife as well and we was able to incorporate Jesus inside of it and speak about God and um, I don't know I just felt like it was a real beautiful intimate intimate date one of the things that I love most about her was on display today and that's just you know her mind and the way she thinks and you know the type of book from the type of book she chose to why she chose it and then the revelation she received you know I, I appreciate how God speaks to her and, and give revelation to her and it was beautiful to hear you know her insight and her thoughts and what God revealed to her and you know it made me better today um as a husband as a Christ follower and I think that's beautiful um you know to have a partner like that that, that pushes you and we sharpen each other also in the comments let us know if y'all like like dates like this because we can like do more of this. hey you making a camera shake oh, bro I get excited sometimes All okay right. go but Comment below if y'all team Lee or team Ray with the dates. I'm winner. First of all, I'm, one, I'm two over right now. Because you know I got an other date, Juliet. Yeah, but I didn't even, they didn't even see how that I'm coming. That's what I'm saying. I'm two over They didn't right even now. see how I'm coming. So don't worry, y'all. Just give me some time. Let me think. Let me process. Let the Holy Spirit speak to me. And I'm going to be back with a good little date. So thank y'all for watching. We love y'all. We love y'all.